try to get my animation from looking like this to looking like this, a much better, more professional looking animation. That's what today's video is all about. Now, when it comes to making your animations look professional, it's all about making very intentional decisions and really focusing on the small details that make all the difference. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the six steps that I took to making this animation look as good as it does. So we're gonna get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. Now this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this, but you can get that on Patreon right now, that's linked in the description. So let's start with step one. The first thing I did was move the point light from inside of the tube to outside of the tube. This allowed these really interesting shadow and light effects which create really interesting visual interest and really make it so much better with that one simple change. I also added a darker red accent light just to create some color changes. Now, the next thing I did was create a really cool material. Not only was the material meant to look cool, but also the roughness allowed the light to kind of play with it and create different effects and create texture and depth. This goes back to those really small subtle changes that make all the difference and really make details look nice. Now, I wanted to create a larger sense of space that this was a big environment, a big scene. So I took the main structure in geometry nodes and I duplicated it and scaled it much farther out so that it creates a much bigger sense of space, but also kind of harnesses that parallax effect where it looks like the thing on the outside is moving slower than the thing on the inside. It's a very cool effect. And I was able to rotate this object, giving me an excuse to find a way to add more motion to the scene. So this allowed me to rotate it and add parallax, making the animation really more stimulating to the eye and just super cool. Now, when it comes to sci-fi renders, I love glowing effects. I don't know if that's unique to me or just everyone loves doing that with sci-fi, but I wanted to find an excuse to do it here. So I was able to take the wireframe system that I already set up, I duplicated it, then I changed some parameters and added an emissive material that really creates this interesting highlight and keeps your eyes within the tube, even though there's other things going on outside of it, but that really keeps your eye in the spot that I wanted it to be, making the composition look really nice. And again, this gave me another opportunity to create some motion by making those emissive objects bounce around and dance around the scene, again, keeping that looking really visually stimulating. Now, the animation is almost done. I did three subtle changes that I'm just kind of lumping into one group. First thing I did was add some camera shake that really kind of gives it this kind of gritty, suspenseful kind of feel, I think. Next thing I did was add some depth of field, really making it go toward more photorealistic, even though this isn't photorealistic at all, it's just more of a sci-fi render. It really kind of hints toward that and makes it feel more believable. And then the last thing I did was add some compositing effects with the glare, creating those kind of stretched out lens distortions with the RGB kind of chromatic aberration and the glare node. All of those combined make these really subtle changes that just make it feel so much better and so much more professional. And there you have it. Those are all the steps. That's what was going on in my mind as I was designing the scene, how I can take it from kind of beginner looking to professional and polished and finished. And I think a lot of these things you can apply to your own animations as you're working. How can create more subtlety in the material so that the light can play with it? Creating some dancing around effects. How can I create space, parallax? All of these different things are really going into how I can make my animations look professional and just look really, really good. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching it again if you want to learn how to make this animation from start to finish that is in my patreon below and if you want to check out real-time materials that really helps support the channel and supports the blender development fund goes a long way uh, thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial